Coming up on Over a Barrel. All right. Well, you know, here's an interesting one for anyone listening uh, on Spotify. uh, We're going to have a poll over there. How do you pay for your gasoline? We'd love to hear from you. Over a Barrel starts right now. Welcome to the program on Over a Barrel. I'm Matt McLean alongside Patrick DeHaan. And as we get into the program, make sure that you subscribe to, well, whatever particular brand of podcast uh, sites that you happen (laughs) to use. And you can also make sure, right, all of them. And make sure that you get into contact with us as well for all of your questions. Patrick, what, what are the ways that they can contact us? Yeah, Matt, there's myriad ways to reach out to us. Podcast at gaspity.com is our email. Uh, of course, you can uh, join us on uh, X or Twitter, uh, Over a Barrel Show. Or if you like, uh, Matt and I are posting content on our individual X accounts. I'm at Gas Buddy Guy. Matt, you're Over a Barrel Matt. And we're on Facebook and also YouTube. We are on Gas Buddy channel on YouTube. Uh, so uh, throw us a follow, a like, a subscribe course you can hear us and probably are listening to us on either apple Podcasts or spotify or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast but matt uh, another week goes by uh good to be back with you yeah and we are also even available on youtube as well so there's a lot of stuff there just just listen that's the most important things and yes it is good to be back with you as well let's get into some of the aspects of different stuff here uh in fact we've had let's let's kind of spice it up a little bit mix it up just a little bit let's talk about some of the stuff that people have messaged us yeah. uh, asking and and wanting to know more information about um dylan uh from my understanding sent us an email as well can you kind of talk to us a little bit about that it's something to do with cash and credit and debit prices talk to us about that yeah, Matt, it was an interesting one. Uh, and, and by the way, thanks, Dylan, for reaching out. And uh, we, we did uh, get a, a couple other user uh, emails here that we'll either, you know, mention uh, briefly or we are always are looking for episode ideas. So if there's something that fascinates you, uh, reach out to us, shoot us an email to the podcast at Gas Buddy account. But yeah, Dylan had some really interesting questions that um, have to do with pricing. Right. Because um, a lot of Americans are probably seeing now this difference seems to be appearing more and more, Matt, where you might see a station advertising a cash price. It might advertise a credit price or even a debit price, because some stations have different prices for all three of those, depending on how you pay. And this is becoming more and more common and probably will continue to become more common. A lot of it, by the way, Matt, stems back to the Department of Justice suing Visa and MasterCard, um, boy, I think the initial lawsuit years and years ago um, for being anti-competitive. And so basically the Department of Justice sued because gas stations could not used to, under the terms of their Visa MasterCard agreements, they used to not be able to offer a different cash price. The, Mm -hmm. the, The Visa and MasterCard used to say, hey, you want to accept our cards? You have to give our users the same price, right? That they can't be disadvantaged. But because the lawsuit, which the Department of Justice won, stations can now offer different prices depending on the reality. And so you might pull into a pump, Matt, and I don't know about you, I I do not carry cash. It is very rare. Uh, I openly admit, I actually want to try to get better about doing that. But yeah, no, it's 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 all plastic. I don't care. It's an inconvenience. I mean, <laughs> I is. will say the last ATM I went to, fascinating enough, it, it, I went to a restaurant, Matt, that had valet parking. And valet is still cash unless, you know, it, it still feels weird asking the, the valet if they take Venmo uh, and, and card because, right, it's a couple of bucks. But I went to an ATM that actually dispensed 20s, 10s, 5s, and 1s. That was a first for me. But getting back to cash, I rarely carry it. But if you're one of the folks that do, you're probably finding more stations offer you a better price if you pay with cash. Because, Mm -hmm. Matt, by the way, I mean, business owners, um, you probably know that there's a cost to accepting credit cards. Oh, yes. That is paid by the business owner, you in that case, or the station. And those fees can add up to billions of dollars uh, for the nation's 150,000 gas stations. So, you know, the interesting insight here is cash is almost always cheaper. I don't, uh, Dylan's question, by the way, uh, it was twofold. Uh, one of the questions was how rare is it for the cash price to be higher 
than the debit credit price. It's virtually impossible because credit and debit have costs associated with accepting those, but cash does not, right? It's just the amount of labor that you need to count the drawer to, you know, so there is a cost of accepting cash, but generally stations prefer cash. Um, and so it's exceedingly rare. I don't think I've ever seen a cash price more expensive than the debit credit price. What you do find, Matt, sometimes is that, you know, if a branded station has a credit card, they may give you the same as cash price because, you know, if you have a branded credit card, they, they get a kickback. So what you'll often see is like big oil company credit card, they'll give you the cash price if you use their card. But that means, you know, you have to have another card in your wallet. Mm, yeah. So yeah, it, it's it's virtually impossible uh, because again, credit cards often have a two and a half to 3% fee Right, and if the national average is call it three fifty a gallon, that um, that call it two and a half percent fee. Uh, adds Boy, up two and a half percent would be nice. I pay three and a three and a fourth. I uh, obviously with video production, I think I'm paying like three or four percent depending upon the brand of the credit card. Yeah, so that that two and a half percent fee, which is low, would amount to about nine cents a gallon. And if it was a three percent fee, it'd be ten and a half cents a gallon. So. That's why it's it's almost impossible to see cash cheaper because credit costs a station about 10 and a half cents a gallon today. And if you're out in California, by the way, Matt, where the average price is over $5, you're talking about a fee of about 16 cents a gallon just for taking the credit card. So that's why cash is always cheaper, um, almost always cheaper. Like I said, maybe there's some rogue station that doesn't know how to price their fuel, but... <laughs> credit has a charge of 3%-ish. Now, the interesting thing about a debit, Matt, for those that don't know, is debit is directly uh, through the bank. Debit generally has a much lower fee. I think it's like a twenty, a, a ten to twenty cent per use, and then it's uh, that might just be it. It might be a per use and a very small transaction fee. But so, debit costs less to accept than a credit card. And so, I think there's some stations like out in California, Arco. Um, which are the old AM PM stores. Mm -hmm. They used to have a debit price that was lower than credit, still not as cheap as cash, but they would say on their pumps, Hey, you know, 25 cent fee for using a debit card. So, uh, Dylan's other part of this question was how rare is triple split pricing with three separate prices for cash credit and debit. It's pretty rare right now because like Arco out West, they don't even accept credit card from my knowledge, unless they change, they only accept cash and debit. But to answer Dylan's question, it is very rare right now to see triple pricing depending on those three payment methods, but it can happen and probably will start happening more. Although a lot of stations treat debit like they do cash. Although I've seen some, some stations have treated debit like credit. So, but it's, it's, it's pretty rare. Pretty much in every station that I've pulled into across multiple states over the past uh, year or two, I mean, more or less when you swipe the card, um, they prompt you for the pin uh, and then you can basically hit cancel or enter for credit or whatever. But they really would prefer, obviously, that you use the debit side for the exact reason that you're talking about, which is it's cheaper for processing fees. Yeah. Great point there, because I, I forget that you can run debit as a credit, but just canceling, hitting the pin, yeah. right? Yeah, and so that's typically interesting. Speaking, and, then, and then you have to pay the credit price for the transaction. Exactly. Now, I, I'll openly admit, uh, I understand the, the variances back and forth, because obviously, uh, as a business owner myself, I take credit and debit and ACH and all of that stuff. I, however, uh, it, it breaks my heart every time I fuel up. And as you know, I go through a lot of gasoline. I just can't, I, I travel <laughs> a lot. But the reality is, uh, for me personally, for a security aspect, I always process it at the pump as a credit card um, simply because what happens Ooh. if the, the pump yep. itself had been uh, uh, compromised in some form or fashion? Skimmed. Exactly. Um, and, or, you know, like, I don't want to enter in my pin number on a, on a thing that a camera could possibly be seeing me, that kind of stuff. So I always just process it as credit. And the unfortunate aspect is I know that it is unfortunately costing that station more for me to do that, but I, it's, I don't ever like enter in my Seinfeld pin episode number. where George Costanza doesn't want to give up his pin number, right? Yep. The, the guy's stuck in the ATM and, and he doesn't want to give him his pin number. And I mean, yeah, I mean, because, uh, to your point, 
Um, although uh, credit card and, and debit card, basically technology has gotten much better. Uh, chips are now required um, by the, the big banks and by the, the credit card companies, right? So a lot of the skimming technology has not necessarily kept up with, and that's why your card now today probably has a chip in it, right? Yep. It's because it's, it's a different way. But yeah, I mean, I, I remember back in the days, you know, skimming is, is still an issue at some stations that only rely on magnetic stripes, but that's why your card has a chip in it today, or at least most of them do. Yep. To, and it reads it and it tells you to hold the, keep right. the card in there. And it says, ah, it's such an annoyance. It is. Uh, and I, I will say that there are some stations that uh, ask me 20 questions. You know, do you want a car wash? Do you want this? Do you want that? Uh, do you like, do you want a receipt? Do you want a gallon of milk? Do you want a yeah, lottery ticket? It, yeah, it, exactly. You have to go through like the whole roll. Two minutes before I'm able to like, you know, take the nozzle off the pump, which is fine if the weather's great. But if it's negative seven outside, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't blame you. Now, here, here's one, Matt, that you got me thinking about, too, when it comes to payments. Have you ever had, um, you know, the payments button is not obvious, right? If you want a car wash, I've almost accidentally said, yes, I want a car wash mm -hmm. because it's, it's almost like, you know, it's almost tricky because sometimes the yes is in a different spot. It's either on the left or right side. And because you just want to rush through those prompts, I've almost said yes a couple of times to getting a car wash when I've been riding my motorcycle. Uh, that probably wouldn't work out too well. That'd be really interesting. <laughs> yeah. But that also, yeah, could you imagine that? Um, I actually am. That's uh, well, if laughing. it's a touchless car wash, right? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> but the other thing about that that kind of that kind of interesting thing is, have you ever pulled into a gas station? And now, normally for me, regular, I think. I'm trying to, to remember now, my, my local station where I am in Tampa, the regular is on the right side, right? The regular button is the yeah. one that's on the right side of the pump. And sometimes you pull into a station and the regular is on the left side of the pump. And so some people just get in such a, a habitual, you know, uh, order when they get to a gas station that they push the button on the left and they might pull into a different station and now you're dispensing premium instead of regular because <laughs> you're used to pressing the same button on the same side. Yep. I've been there and done that. Uh, I absolutely have been guilty of doing that as well. You're, you're exactly right. Uh, but yes, so, I mean, that's, that's a lot of stuff there, um, uh, understandably. Um, that, that, there's a lot of security involved in that. Um, and so, you know, one of the other things that I will throw out there, and many people, in fact, a lot of business owners, uh, for example, don't even necessarily realize that. But I found out the hard way several years ago that business debit and credit cards are not covered under the Consumer Protection Act. So if, oh, you're, if your card is skimmed and somebody decides to use it, you are not going to get that money back uh, as a guarantee like you would uh, if it were a personal uh, debit or credit card where by law they're oh, obligated. Yikes. Yeah, uh, I did not know that. I found out the hard way. Not going to disclose exactly how much money was lost, but let me tell you, it was a lot. And that's when the bank um, had a nice little discussion with me and said, well, federal law doesn't, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. And I'm like, what do you mean? And et cetera, et cetera. And so the money was just gone. Uh, and now you've learned something new. Which means I don't use a business credit card uh, at any place where I feel that the card could potentially be compromised. I have to do a reimbursement. Wait, so, so a, 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 a credit card, a business credit card, or did you mean to say debit card? It's both. It's both. So a business credit card does not get the same protection. Interesting. It, 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 that is how it was explained to me. Um, and they pulled out all the information. And, and even a lot of you know, the, the tellers and stuff at, at the banks don't even realize that. Um, so, yes, no, they are not required to give you that money back, uh, as it is with the case with a personal debit or credit card. So, like I said, uh, my workaround is use a personal uh, and then do a, a business reimbursement. So, for all of you business owners out there, um, obviously check with your, your folks and reconfirm all of that. But that is how it was explained to me. And sure enough, I lived it. So, all right. Well, fun. you know, here, here's an interesting one for anyone listening uh, on Spotify. Uh, we're going to have a poll over there. How do you pay for your gasoline? We'd love to hear from you. Credit, debit, or cash? Answer the poll at the end of the Spotify podcast if you're listening there. Otherwise, we'd love to hear from you on Over a Barrel Show on Twitter. How do you pay? For credit, or how do you pay for gas? Credit card, debit card, cash? Is there a rewards program? Do you have loyalty? Uh, let's hear from uh, some of our listeners here on how they pay. I'm, I'm really interested because I, I personally, Matt, pay with credit card. 
Um, and again, I almost always pay with credit card. I almost never use debit because credit card, you know, you get the rewards. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have, you know, I think all my credit cards, if I look at my wallet, I have like a 2% card. I have like an airline miles card. Um, of course I have my pay with gas buddy card that I use for, for most purchases at, at a gas Same. station. But, uh, yeah, I'd love to hear from folks on, on what your strategy is. Do you like to get those rewards? Um, you know, do you, do you layer? Because I know people, Matt, layer our pay with gas buddy card with a loyalty program. And I think, you know, in one of our past episodes, I was talking about doing that myself at, at one of the locations. They have a loyalty program. I got 25 cents off from them. And then with a pay with gas buddy card, I got another 27 cents a gallon off. Uh, and we'll mention uh, we'll mention the results on a future show. How does America pay for its gasoline credit, debit, or cash? Uh, should we make a prediction? I'm going to assume it's predominantly credit. I'm going to say 80 percent credit. That's 80 my credit. Thought. But debit might be higher than both of us think. I mean, I I'm going to say debit's like uh, I'm going to say debit 15 and then cash five. So yeah. 80, 15, and five. I I I'm just going to take a guess. I'd love to hear from you again. <laughs> If you're I'm going to go Spotify, a little bit differently with that. I'm 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 going to okay. say I'm going to say debit is more like probably thirty to thirty five, maybe forty percent. Honestly, I really? I really okay. I think some people like even whenever you're standing at a store and checking out, people just whenever the the machine prompts you for a pin number, people just seem to 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 put that pin number on in. And I'm a little bit more cautious about it, but uh, I see a lot of people just throwing that pin number in there and and yeah. going for it. Interesting. I, All I right. Think, I think that's what it is. Hey, the bet is the on. Way, yes, the, the bet is on. So I'm, I'm going to be a little bit different than, than Patrick on my on my predictions, and let's see what happens. But there is one gas station about 15 minutes from where I'm sitting that actually takes cash at the gas pump, which I find to be fascinating. Wait, uh, it's, what? It's been that way for years. Uh, it's it's an Exxon station, um, and it 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 there are not every single pump in in the. In its so setting. like as a bill acceptor, it does about I, I think I think all right all right for, first and four foremost since I've never heard them. of this I mean oh, I've, you've I've never seen heard it of this? I, I've 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 what? seen it at one pump but it was not working it was like an after hours card lock station yeah and they literally had a bill acceptor and I didn't get a picture of it, it was so long ago all right Matt I need on assignment if you could take <laughs> a picture of that please I will do that I will do that yes no there I think there that's are wild. four four or six pumps in the whatever that's called, you know, that's under the canopy. Uh, not every pump has it, but several of them do. Is it, a, it's a, is it a regular station or is it like a card lock, meaning like it's a commercial station? No, no, no. It's a regular station. You can just drive okay. right on. It's an Exxon station. Interesting. Uh, uh, it, as it's brand anyway. Uh, under, yeah. No, I, and it's and, one of and, the and only so ones I've ever like seen. A, yeah, it's basically like a little mini ATM that you feed the money, and now does it give change back? Probably not. Truthfully, I don't know. I would assume the Ooh. answer is yes, but uh, I really I don't, don't know. know the answer to that. I, I mean, we're I I, I re, I've used it. It's been years, uh, but I've actually used it for cash. I just don't remember if it. Can you please changed. put a dollar in your tank with that method? I want to. I, I, I'm very curious. Yeah. No. I, I I tell you what. I need to get gas here in the next 24 to 48 hours after. I yes. will do it. I will actually go out of my way and do that because, um, but yes, no, I, I remember it accepted multiple different kinds of bills. That's you know, wild. I don't think it took fifties or one hundreds, but I, you mean I, from like Canadian currency? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it was, it, I think it was water ones, down that money. <laughs> ones, fives, tens and twenties, I believe uh, are, okay. are, are the, uh, are the denominations there that it accepted. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, it, it blew my mind. It's, it's the only station I've seen like that. Uh, I I've heard of them, but I've, that's the only one that I've actually seen in practice. I've actually used it for the cash before. So, yes, I will that's, be happy to. Wild. I know, right? So, and understandably, the ones with the cash are actually closest to where the clerks can see those particular pumps and not the ones further away. So, I, I guess it's more of a security thing as well. But, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely do that. I didn't, yeah, know, I, I I didn't know you would that. never That's, use that. I, I, I mean, had, it's, it's, it's so rare that you actually is. would, you know, see something like that. But, uh, well, well, terrific. I look forward to that. And again, uh, hopefully we'll get some responses to our poll and, and see how America fills up. I'm going to post the uh, poll on X as well. Um, so so check that out. Uh, Gas Buddy Guy, uh, again, on X or Twitter uh, for our poll. Cash, credit, or debit. Now, steering the conversation a little bit differently, Matt, I've been seeing a lot of stuff on social media. Um, recently, the Biden administration announced that they were 
suspending mm-hmm. refilling or or I shouldn't say refilling, but new purchases of oil for the nation's strategic petroleum reserve. This has been a very political hot topic, right? The SPR using it, refilling it. If you saw the news recently, um, the Department of Energy, because the price of oil is now at its highest level since October of last year, the Department of Energy has stopped soliciting purchases or, or bids to refill the SPR. Now, the thing is, the SPR is going to continue to go up for the next several months because the, the Department of Energy put bids out all the way through delivery, I think, for September. It may have been August, Matt, meaning that that yeah. the SPR is going to keep going up until August. But because the price of oil is now above the strike price, the Department of Energy said, we'll refill it for $79 and below. Obviously, since oil is now at 85 you don't need an, an, you know somebody to tell you, okay, well, that's a little bit above their range. And so the Department of Energy said, okay, we're, we're, we're not going to buy any more for now. And th- this has really opened up a lot of people on social media, lightning rod of responses um, about refilling the SPR. Now, again, if the price goes back below 79, Matt, this is, you know, the Department of Energy is still going to refill it. This is like you wanting to buy a house, your interest rate right. or the mortgage, you know, the housing market's too hot. You don't just say, okay, I'm, I'm forever giving up on owning a house. You say, I'm going to wait until rates go down, right? Yeah, no, or, that's exactly right. Or the right. housing market goes down. So, this is not, you know, this is not to be a permanent thing. Uh, but but for now, the Department of Energy is halting new purchases. Um, the good news is deliveries are going to continue to flow into the strategic reserve until about August. You know, but the interesting thing is, Matt, and, and this is where we get political, is there have been a lot, of, as I mentioned, politics on both sides. Yeah, right? I People's, mean, the Biden administration's a Democrat side, but Republicans were apparently wanting to drain it as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm help us. I'm confused. Yeah, see, that's, that, that's interesting. Yeah. See the fact that, you know, that I think most Americans don't know that, uh, truth be told back in 2017 at the encouragement of the heritage foundation, which I think most of us can agree is a, is a right think tank, a conservative, uh, think tank called the heritage foundation. They wrote an article back in 2015 saying the time is now to pull the plug on the reserve. Basically, they wanted the president um, to pull the plug to sell the entire SPR in two to three months to pay down the debt. So this is not, you know, the fact that President Biden used it and, and quote unquote, drained the strategic reserve, that, that wasn't a new idea because Trump had also proposed that in his 2018 budget, which which happened in 2017, by the way, because even President Trump said, OK, this reserve is is not. You know, it's been sitting there for for decades and we've not really used it. But now it appears I'm, I'm sure the Republicans now, given the fact that they had such a problem with Biden selling it, I, I'm pretty sure this qualifies as a reversal. The Republicans would not want to sell it. And the interesting thing here, I think the Democrats have also realized after Russia's invasion of Ukraine that they shouldn't sell it. In fact, the Biden administration reversed the mandated sales that the Trump administration put on the SPR. There was a mandated drawdown and the Biden administration actually reversed that. So I think bottom line here, Matt, is it's interesting because Republicans are really angry that it was drained, but it's being refilled. But at the same time, Republicans back under Trump were also encouraging it to be drained. Uh, it's a, uh, I, I mean, the question mark that I have in my mind is so long as crude oil is a commodity that is a necessity whether yeah. however long that takes my question would be why would you ever take essentially a strategic 100%. petroleum reserve and yeah. do away with it because that i mean it doesn't take someone who is an expert in security to uh, you know 100%. in national security to look at that and go well if you don't have a backup plan then doesn't that right. leave you vulnerable so right. why, 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 what's happening? I'm so like, what, what is happening here? What's, what's, why, yeah, why, I mean, the, and, and, and to, why the and to, hot potato so I, politically I, I put, I pushed back on the Republican side because they wanted to drain it too, right? And now I'm going to push back on the Democrat side because in 2020, when President Trump during COVID, remember when oil went negative, Trump wanted to, uh, to, to go the other way. He flip-flopped. He wanted to drain it in 2017. And then in 2020, the businessman, and Trump said, hey, oil's 20 or $25 a barrel. Let's fill it up. And then 
It was the Democrats said, no, that's a bailout for the oil sector. But I am adamant it should have been refilled. But I mean, that that time is clearly past us. And, you know, if you look back on X, by the way, Matt, I I'd had to share this because so many people say I'm a Biden shill. No, I'm, I'm a shill for economics and, and just doing things that are logical and filling the SPR to your point is logical. Keeping it is logical. Right. And back in 2020, it was logical that Trump wanted to refill it with cheap oil. Mm -hmm. But now it's kind of funny because the tables have turned. Now the now the Republicans are angry that Biden sold the oil at a high price. He was refilling it at a lower price. So they That's made just, a profit. Oh, they did. It's exhausting, though, that, you know, somebody's OK with draining it back under Trump. But now when Biden, you know, emptied it. Well, he didn't empty it. So let me let me go back. On my I was words. just going to say <laughs> it's over half full. But Matt, here's the thing. Republicans are saying it was so stupid to drain it. Are, are, are the Republicans saying then that when oil spiked after Russia's invasion, it went from, I think, 75 to one hundred and thirty dollars a barrel in like a, a matter of days. Are Republicans saying that they would not have used it and they would have let oil and gas prices continue to surge? back in 2022 is that is that the parallel we're going to draw because if it wasn't tapped oil prices probably would not have come back down as quickly yeah so you know again it's another political um it's another political conundrum right and 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 i i just don't understand any uh, i just don't understand any even uh, okay background worked in the news media for many many years uh, more than two decades oh boy everyone I, hates you now well well but i'm a recovering journalist okay so we'll we'll, we'll go with that but but my point is i understand very very extensively how politics work on every political aspect and i understand even kind of that back you know back door back uh, office kind of a mindset where like i get it like half the time these politicians are going out and having dinner afterward and whatnot it's not happening nearly as often as it used to uh, depending on, you know, it it really has gotten quite uh, tumultuous. But my point is this. Um, it doesn't make sense to me that you would look at anything, uh, even on a political scale. I mean, that would be like Canada saying, oh, OK, we're going to do away with the st uh, strategic uh, maple syrup reserve that we have. <laughs> uh, Canada's economy is is quite dependent on their major products that they produce. And they just so happen to produce an awful lot of maple syrup. Um it doesn't make logical sense, no matter who is sitting in the White House, no matter who is in charge of Congress, to look at anything. And if America really does produce as much oil as we both know that they do, why would you get rid uh, rid of your your strategic? I mean, it's in the it's in the name. <laughs> well, he, here's here's the thing, Matt: is politicians get complacent, and that reserve with hundreds of millions of barrels in it, politicians look at it like Scrooge McDuck, right? With mm -hmm. a bunch of dollar signs in his eyes. And so politicians, by the way, today, Matt, that 363 million barrels that's currently in the strategic reserve, the value of that reserve is in the ballpark of $31 billion of oil. That's very tempting for a politician looking to make ends meet or looking to justify spending is that the strategic reserve holds 363 million barrels of oil worth $31.2 billion. So I think that's where it gets a little tempting, Matt, is, is we both know that politicians on both sides of the aisle like to spend money. You cannot convince me otherwise, because look at, you know, look yeah. at how the past administrations have been spending money, you know, it during didn't the, use the to pandemic. be that way, but it sure no, is it didn't. now. No, now it is, you know, and, and, and look at President Bush and President Trump. Both of them contributed a nice chunk to our national deficit, as is President Biden and Obama. So yep. it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you're on. Politicians have been spending more than taxpayers have been paying. And so, the you know, that's probably why our, they wanted to get rid of it. Yeah, the only time in our lifetimes and the lifetimes of most Americans where we were operating in the black as a country. I remember it. Was, I, so do I, was during the President Clinton years with Clinton, a Republican. Yeah, a with surplus. A, with a Republican-controlled Congress. So the Speaker of the House was Newt Gingrich, a Republican, yeah, President Clinton, yeah. a Democrat. And we were operating in the black as a country, and the, the national debt was actually decreasing for the first time 
uh, in our lifetimes, and that's unfortunately been the last time in our lifetimes that it happened. And then nine eleven happened, and then our spending went through the roof. Well, and it, okay. it has never stopped. And I'm going to piss off some people by saying, well, after Clinton, who is a Democrat, ran surpluses, who was the next guy in the White House? It was a Republican. Yeah. And guess what happened? We started operating at a deficit. And then Obama came and we're operating at a deficit and Trump came and we have deficits and now Biden in deficits. Is it ever going to turn around? And there's a very small vocal group, you know, of um, of politicians um, that, you know, are adamant now that we do not spend anymore. So the, the thing is, though, and this is probably why it was a Heritage Foundation idea that they wrote this article in 2015 of draining it to get money. But obviously, Matt, there's a trade off money or security, because to your point, it is a strategic reserve. It's not designed to have to be utilized, but politicians get complacent when they need to see dollar signs. When they turn into Scrooge McDuck's, they look for money. And that $31.2 billion in a, a pool of oil, that can probably be pretty tempting. I mean, but that anyway, might spend I just 50, to, that's like 15 minutes worth of federal government spending right there. I'm just throwing it out it's, there. It might be even more disappointing <laughs> than that. It could be 15 <laughs> seconds right now. But anyway, just to push back on this narrative that Republicans wanted to drain the SPR too. Um, by the way, if you want to complain about this podcast episode, please email complaints at <laughs> AOL.com. <laughs> so, but, but let, 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 let's push back here on this political narrative because both parties, you know, Biden used part of it when oil prices jumped $50 a barrel, Trump wanted to get rid of it. Here we are. I think everyone can agree now, right? Biden is refilling it slowly. I wish it would be more rapidly, but even the Republicans now are so angry that it was drained that I'm guessing that Republicans want it refilled too. So look, look at this, Matt. America is united. We realize now that we want this reserve, but I think we're going to be in disagreement with how to use it. Uh, yeah, that that would probably make the most sense. It, and about the only thing sometimes that I think the two political parties are in agreement nowadays are are the fact that we all need air to breathe. And I so far have not seen a disagreement. No, there's about probably that. a disagreement on what type. There of air. might be. You're probably right, but uh, you're yeah. But I mean, it's it's <laughs> we we collectively as a country we we will eventually get there where we're going to hopefully uh, get those diplomat diplomatic individuals back in and say, come, let us reason with one another. But um, you know, yeah, for right now, we, we seem to be, uh, uh, you know, but you're by, right. The by the way, be different. Yeah. By the way, anyone, anyone, I would like to hear a logical argument. If somebody says we don't need the SPR, I mean, we are producing more than we ever have as a country, although it has, it is U S domestic oil production has uh, fallen off a bit and it's, it's likely to continue inching down. I'd be curious if anyone has a rational case for not having an SPR. Would anyone be willing to make that argument? Send us an email, podcast at gasbuddy.com. If you don't think we need the strategic reserve, what do you think should happen to it? I would love to hear from some of our, our followers, Matt, and, and hopefully we'll hear back from some of them. And and maybe we can have some uh, logical discussions on, on what they say. But also, check out the poll on X about cash, credit, or debit. We'd love to hear on how you pay or how you plan to pay this summer. I know the economy is not great, right? Uh, inflation continues to go up, Matt, and I hear more and more about consumers spending on their credit cards again. Uh, yes, uh, that credit card debt is definitely on, on the way collectively for America. It is definitely on the rise uh, as well. So it, 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 is, uh, it is an interesting thing uh, to really kind of uh, keep an eye on uh, when it comes to our national debt. Um, the Congressional Budget Office, by the way, which is a nonpartisan, as nonpartisan as you can get anyway in this current uh, environment, uh, has said, you know, it came out really within the past uh, short amount of time that our spending is not sustainable. We all know this. I mean, it's not like we needed a, a budget office to come out and tell us really mm -hmm. the, the obvious in the room. But they really did go down into great detail about how we are in very serious financial trouble if we keep spending at the levels that we are. Uh, and really about a decade from now, we're going to be way above that 115, 16 percent of GDP um, where we basically create an economic firestorm in a bad way for ourselves um, and and that's going to create some problems. So again, it's a nonpartisan, you know, congressional budget office. They're not trying to earn brownie points with either political party. They're just simply saying, 
uh, the spending either needs to get in line or we're, we're the can that keeps getting kicked down the road is getting heavier and heavier to kick to kick. And eventually um, somebody's going to try to kick it and it's going to have a, a very solid thud to it. and It's not going to budge. And then we're going to have a problem. Um, and that is not uh, not uh, very long down the road as well. And so we'll be keeping a watch fly on. On everything, but definitely, yeah. Let us know. Maybe, uh, maybe we can get some folks and, and possibly even make them as guests on onto the podcast as well for the different types of, of uh, you know, thoughts back and forth uh, as well. Sure. So that would be yeah, fun. Absolutely, reach out to us. Absolutely. You know, Matt. I know there was a lot of politically charged uh, topics here. Uh, hopefully, you made it through everything. Uh, it was another great episode. You want to wrap us up? Absolutely. Make sure that you obviously keep following us. We are very happy to kind of keep. Uh, keep getting those questions and whatnot. And, and of course, at, at, at Gas Buddy Guy and, uh, and at uh, Over a Barrel Matt. And then also at Over a Barrel Show, all on X as well as on Facebook. Make sure you get a hold of us. And we will, of course, uh, discuss those topics and, and give you all the information as well. But for Patrick and myself, it's, uh, it's been a great show. And we'll talk again coming up really soon. So long. So long.